Okay, I'll do a cut to center. It's got a flat on the end and a tip, or just a tip, but I'll rotate towards me so I see the cut line come up over the horizon and I can keep a straight cut turning it to me easily because you can see it as it rises up over and it cuts the center can be very helpful for lots of different forgings or you can cut it other ways to help encourage make it easier to make something else like a, a point if you're going to forge a point and you can change the angle by changing your hold that you get I can cut straight without having a straight cutter. So now I'm just going to get a good long heat and flatten, hitting 180 degrees each side, alternating between blows, using the near side of the anvil with a radius. I'll make my own flat stock. So we're going to make a horse head. This is a half inch round. Mild steel. I want a good yellow heat so it's most pliable. Running out of heat, so I'll go back here with the flat hammer, take out lumps and bumps. I'm over about a 5 16 radius. It's a little thinner, or thicker, and not quite as wide there, so I'm just going to go back over. So I'm going to do the horse head now. I'm going to use about two thirds, three quarters, as long as it is wide, to create the step in front of the jaw. Then I'll go to the far, I'll do that on the near side over a sharp edge. Then I'll go to the far edge to do the chin. And I'll increase my angle. Then I'll go to the far edge again behind the jaw and use about as long as it is wide to create that. It's all about learning and creating proportions in it to like when you're doing heads, leaves, whatever. You know, you got to determine how big do you want. About ratios and proportions and Having a longer heat than you need so it stays hot longer is helpful. A good heat to start with. So. Hitting in the same spot, and then at the end, I'll go up. I'll take my I'll go back over.
Now I'll hit the diagonals. I'm going to use a punch. It's got a, it's like a chisel, but I call it a punch because it, it will actually shear and leave a plug. A chisel won't do that. I'll lay it out cold because I can see it. And I'll overlap this short chisel because it'll penetrate faster, easier. I can see the center it will and where I start and stop. That way when I come out with heat, I don't have to look so much as just feel it. Leaving the bow in it from the actual laying out that line will keep less material in contact with my anvil. It'll stay hot longer if I don't straighten it and all of it's touching the anvil. So those little things like that can extend your forging time. What you can accomplish in a heat. And see that plug just fell out onto the face. That's what you like to see. And that's where a shorter, thinner punch, I can do it in less blows than one that gives me more the size I'm after. But I can make it as long or short as I want, you know, as short as that is anyway, with that one. Now I will open it up with a slot opener that will not entirely fill the hole. That will allow it to go in, open it up, and leave me heat in the material, compared, more heat compared to if I used one that exactly fit it, that opens it completely. You got to force it more. 
This will go through easily. Leave me heat where I can go in with my full size drift easier and get me to the final size a little quicker, easier, less distortion to the surrounding material around the hole. Before I open it though, I need to cut it because if I open it once I, if I cut it once I open it, I might hit where I've pulled it out to create the opener. It'll be in my way more because it stands out from the rest of the material. And when I'm setting all this up, I'm trying to make sure I have enough material at the end of, of the hole, the same amount as the sides of my hole. That way it opens up nicely. And if it has much of a burr, file it off so you don't fold, fold it into the steel and create a weak spot. Set yourself out up so you succeed before you come out with hot steel. By that I meant make sure your drift fits the hole. If it doesn't, you might get it stuck. It'll stop you in the heat and you have to take a second heat to be able to get through the material. Tong, tong clips are a must. They will help you manipulate your material better. That wasn't far enough in. It didn't open it to the end of the hole. You can see by that little, it's like this at the end of the hole. But while I'm doing this, I can get a tool that will fit inside that hole. It lets the heat go back around the hole to where I can get a little bit more where I want to go in the same heat.
man. I should have shifted, traded out stations or ground around that hole before we did this because it's, this isn't quite finished as far as it wasn't ground around the hole and this is not as solid as my other one because there's a hump that this kind of pivots on, this anvil. <clears throat> you can hear it. I can feel it. I'm looking at the thickness of the perimeter of the hole and trying to get it uniform as quickly as possible. My target is an inch round. I know that'll open any bottle, bottled beverage. That's ugly. A little bit hot. One side and then the other. We'll centerize it. And I'm looking for any gaps around my mandrel or 
drift. I don't know if y'all saw the sparks, but on one side of this, there's a little bit of sparking. I got a little hot. I don't want to burn it up at this stage, so I'm going to push it past the hot spot of my fire and actually touch the edge of my fire pot with this thin edge So, and try and keep it level so I am less apt to burn it up. The fire pot can act as a heat sink. That's an important thing to know, prevent it from burning up finer parts of your forging. I'm gonna mark it with the ball fuller that actually opens the cap. So I need heat in the bar where it's, you know, much wider than that little stuff. By pushing it past the hot spot, I can accomplish that. Okay, I, I could lay out my uh, face cold or at colder heat. So I'm going to do the eye, then the nose, then the, uh, where's my eye? There's my eye. And the eye has two points on it. I use those as a gauge or guide. Plus, different landmarks on the head itself for where to place this. For the eye, I'm looking like somewhere near where the front of the jaw transitions. Then I'll do my nose. And it's kind of like a C shape. It's a square taper that you round off one side and use a, like a round file on the other to create a crescent. I'll use the back of the jaw into the neck as a place to locate the ear. Then I have this little, kind of like a teardrop, kind of triangular fuller that I use to define the ear, give it a more realistic appearance. And I'll try and center that on the base of that earlobe or ear. When your proportions are right, that can come out really nice or a little cartoonish looking. This is a fuller, a narrow fuller, probably 3 16 wide. And because this is a longer handle, I'm gonna give it five marks instead of three. If it was shorter, from here to the opener. I try and cover that in three fuller lines. Just fewer hits. Now I'll take a hit. And I can't hammer this side very well unless I do it from here. So I either have to choose to do it like this 
or with a ball fuller. I prefer to just use the heel of the hammer. It's quicker, easier, I don't have to grab a tool. Uh, just my personal preference. If I want to bend this, I can do it several ways. I'm not going to bend it real uh, drastically. But I do want somewhat of a pleasing curve. And I need heat further back. Now I have a sharp where someone, especially a female or someone with real soft hands might catch that burr and cut themselves so I always tuck those in I'll just put some heat in it try and bend it a little bit further back on the neck I think it'll be a little more pleasing than that straight line and uh, I need to make my fuller marks deeper if it'll it'll enhance it when you do the ear if you're going to bend it ne the neck drastically where it looks like it's a horse standing you know with its chin kind of tucked down if you chisel and fuller your ear before you do that, it'll stretch it and make it look awkward. So it's best to bend it and then chisel and fuller for a sharp bend. I'm just going to fill my fuller lines I put in at a black heat. My eye could be a little deeper. It didn't give me as much of a line on the bottom surface or area of the eye as I'd like. If you have to reheat areas, you don't want to finish all the forging because the scale will, will you'll lose detail. So you can lay it out and you know, I put a little curve in it so it'll flop if I hit it, but I can go back in now with uh, my eye punch, make it more pronounced. I could do that with my nose, my ear, and mouth. If they got uh, 
filled in with scale, I would definitely want to do it. This has stayed pretty clean, but just to reinforce that idea, I'll show doing it. The bolder your marks, generally, the more eye appealing it has. Yep. Eye appeal. Bold is beautiful in steel. That's going to flop, so if you want to come over here and hold this, I can do that without it bouncing off the anvil. And now I can put my kind of, I like having a slight bow. It feels better, like if you put it in your pocket, if it's a back pocket anyway. It holds it up off a table if it's set down and being used a lot. Where you can get it easy. Don't want to slow down the drinking process. I'll call that done. Well, except for the oil finish. I do like an oil finish on things. It feels good, keeps it from rusting. And I'll just use an oil rag with vegetable oil on it for that. It's kind of like seasoning a cast iron skillet. As, it, as you apply it and it smokes, it's putting layers of your finish on there. A good black used rag that's been charred is going to give you a better oil finish than a brand new oil with brand new clean rag does. It darkens faster and deeper uh, the more it's used. Oh, I could, yeah. I don't have a good touch mark these days. I left it in California on my last trip there to visit my kids. So what did we do with that yesterday? So I'm using an old wore out one that's not as crisp and clean, but that's an EB on this one. I've been able to kind of tell the time period when I made stuff depending on what I touch marked it with. And back in the early stages of Brian and I making tools, sometimes things were marked at less than an ideal heat, and I went through a number of touch marks. And that's one of them. It blunted them prematurely. But there's my EB. Uh, you know, should have enough heat. If I don't, I'll just put a little more heat on it. You got to go to them. Small areas first, they'll cool off faster. Sometimes you won't get the same finish on a small area if you don't do it right away as you do where there's more mass and it holds the heat longer. And before one leaves the shop, I usually like to test them just to make sure they work as intended. I've had some that are left sharp on the edge where you have maybe a not an ideal radius on your fuller or you put it too far in and it leaves a sharp edge on that little nib it can break the glass uh, others you know they slip off if it doesn't protrude enough a good easy fix if you have a problem is put a little bow to it like that and it'll reach underneath the cap easier and pop it off like real easily. Or you can shorten it. It doesn't have to be an inch if you shorten it. Uh, that's why some of them are triangular shaped. You can get more leverage too, because your pivot point. So anyway, 
There it is.